everybody, and welcome to the Historical Sew Along series, where we'll take you through the ins and outs of some simple historical sewing projects to build up your wardrobe and your hand skills. Maybe even both at the same time. From prep work to finished product, we'll do it together, following step-by-step -step instructions with some tips and tricks sprinkled in along the way. This series is meant for all skill levels, but it is especially nice for beginners to build confidence while building a solid toolkit of techniques. With all of that said, feel free to pause, rewind, rewatch, and fast forward to whichever parts you need as many times as necessary. So let's get to the good stuff. Hi everyone, this is Brooke with Burnley and Trowbridge. You're joining us for part one of our three-part historical sew-along series on bed gowns. So the bed gown is the next step in creating your 18th century kit. You've done a shift, petticoat, pocket, and now it's time to do the bed gown. The methods you're going to see in this sew along can be used um, with any style of bed gown, whether you're cutting it from this pattern, another pattern, or um, cutting it out uh, by geometry from your measure. Today we are going to print out the E pattern, put it together, discuss which size of the pattern you should use, lay out our fabric, and cut out our bed gown. But first, let's talk about what is a bed gown. The term bed gown is often used for um, a semi-fitted uh, garment worn by women on the upper half of their body. It's possible that this is the same garment that some people refer to as a short gown or a jacket. These terms in the 18th century were not as concrete as we would like them to be today, but there's plenty of evidence that these garments were worn by women of all social classes in the 18th century when working, uh, in their home or out of the home. Uh, you see them being quite loose in some cases with large cuffs and later in the century being quite fitted with longer sleeves. Uh, many of the women in these images that are wearing them are wearing them over stays. There's definitely a lot of images showing women without stays on while a number of extant bed gowns uh, are lined. There are some that are unlined and many that are referred to in runaway advertisements, um, inventories that show that both lined and unlined bed gowns were common. And today we'll be making one that is unlined. A little fun fact for everyone out there. I love fun facts. In the 18th century, bed gowns were cut by geometry. You need just a few measurements and a lot of practice. <laughs> Since this is the first bed gown for many of you, we wanted to make the process a bit smoother. And so we're offering an e-pattern to help you cut it out. This e-pattern has been created by Angela from Birdley and Trowbridge and Lauren from Wearing History. The pattern was inspired by an extant bed gown in the collection at Platt Hall that Angela had a chance to see many years ago, and other extant bed gowns in the Winter and Colonial Williamsburg and Met collections. All right, so now it's time to start on our bed gown. So you're ready to print out your pattern. Um, you need to make sure that you're printing it to actual size when you make the selection to print and not fitting it to the page. After you've printed out the first page, you can measure these squares here. They're on a one inch grid just to confirm that you have the right size. After you've printed it out, you're ready to tape it together. All right, so let's tape this together. We've got 20 rectangles to put together. And this is going to require a little bit of cutting on one of these two sides. You can see there are a lot of pages. There's actually 20. So you might want to do this on your floor or a large kitchen table or your bed um, so that you have enough space to get the whole thing laid out. So once our pieces are laid out, we're going to trim and tape. All right, 
Now it's time to decide which size you're going to cut out with this pattern. Since Christina is not here today, I can use a tape measure. <laughs> So we're going to take the tape measure and we're going to put it around your bust. And it doesn't need to be super tight because this is not a fitted garment. It can be a little bit looser. It can be a little tighter depending on how fitted you want this bed gown to be to you. So I'm going to measure pretty comfortably and it's 39 inches. So once you have your bust measure, you can use it to figure out which size pattern you need to cut out. So I'm a 39 and that's in between the medium and the large pattern size. Since I'm going to be wearing my bed gown with stays, I'm going to go for the slightly smaller size. If you think you're going to be wearing this without stays or if you like a looser fit, then you could go up a size. All right, so with this pattern, you'll see that we have all the different colors for the different sizes. Medium is my favorite color, teal. I like how that worked out. I had no part in that planning of that. Um, so I'm gonna be cutting along the teal line for the medium, and you'll notice there's a little dash line for the seam allowance. Um, with this pattern, we have left half an inch for the side seam allowance and a quarter of an inch for the collar, which we'll talk about later. So now I'm gonna cut the whole pattern out um, along uh, the teal line. We're gonna be cutting out the bed gown body. There's a collar, and then we have the sleeve cuff pieces uh, here below. All right, so now we're ready to cut out the powder. Um, I'm gonna be cutting along the teal line for size medium. The dashes are the seam allowance, so cut along the straight line. Just be careful with this neck area up here. There's a lot of dots and marks and you don't wanna lose any of the ones that are in your color as you're cutting this section out. So this section here could be a little bit confusing when cutting it out because there is no teal line for me, but I know that I'm cutting on the correct edge because there's cut on the fold just to the left of where I'm cutting. So I know that this line is the universal line for the entire center part of the pattern. Now we're going to cut two other pieces out. We're going to cut the collar um, starting at this end and going all the way up to the second line for our neck. Don't cut along this line. This is just marking where the, the center back of this piece is. You're cutting here and then along whichever measures yours. For mine, it's at the teal. The final piece that we're going to cut out is the sleeve cuff and we're going to start at this end and work towards um, your size. All right, so we've cut our pattern out and now we are ready to figure out how much fabric we need and how to lay it out. Here at the bottom of the pattern, you'll see that there's a cutting layout to help you figure out, depending on the width of your fabric and the size of the pattern that you've chosen to use, which is the best usage of a fabric um, as you go across. So after you make that decision, before you jump into laying out your fabric, 
let's look at how this is gonna work. The way that you need to fold the fabric to cut out a bed gown, whether you're using a pattern or not, can be a bit tricky the first time you do it. So we're going to try out the folding on a smaller scale on a piece of paper. So first, the purple lines here are the selvage of your fabric. So we are going to fold the fabric in half. So selvage edges are together and we have a nice fold here. Then we're going to fold it in half this way. This is the shoulder on your pattern, then this is the center front on your pattern piece. And I'm going to mark the neck line here and down the front. That didn't go so well. There we go. So we have the neckline cut here and the center front it's marked here. Then here is the underarm out over the hip. Then we can cut all of those layers out like this. If you open it up, we have the front and the back. The front and the back. Before we open it anymore, I can cut with the pattern still here. I can cut the neck piece and we can cut on the fold up to the front the pattern. And then we can open out the whole thing. Not the best cutting job right there, but. All right, so now we're ready to cut out our fabric and I've chosen a linen, um, a dark indigo with a medium indigo that's 60 inches wide. And I've folded it selvage to selvage like I showed in the little paper folding diagram and then folded it the other half. Um, my piece is two yards according to the cutting diagram and this is going to be where the center front cut line is going to be. So laying the pattern, on top. Oh, some extra expert taping went on there. So, going to line it up with the fold here at the top on the shoulder and the fold in the front and going to pin carefully so that this doesn't wander. through all the layers because we're going to cut through all the layers and this is your chance just to get everything nice and straight. You don't want this center line to wander at all. Alright, at this point, before you cut out your pattern, you just want to check to make sure that with your sleeve piece, the, the extension, that your measurement from your neck to wrist isn't longer than you want or is long enough. So I'm going to lay this one here that I've cut with my medium. I'm going to overlap my seam allowance and measure what this is from neck to wrist, and that's 29. And then from the back of my neck down to my wrist is about 28. So that'll be perfect um, because that gives me a little bit for seam allowance, turning it up at the wrist. Um, if you discover that this is more than you need it to be, you can slide this up a little bit um, or fold it or cut off what's extra. Now, if you have exactly the right amount of fabric here and you want to cut the body of the bed gown and the sleeve extension, the cuff all in one, you can do that. Um, I am going to cut this from the scrap fabric lower in the bed gown. All right, let's cut out the bed gown, but we're gonna need a bigger pair of scissors.
Let me try that again with the larger scissors. Now we're ready. Let's go. So now we're ready to cut out the cuff along the fold, um, but we only want to cut it through two layers. So I'm going to get rid of this part down here and lay out, make sure you don't lose the other layer. So I have two, two layers here. I'm going to place this so that it fits perfectly right in there. I'm going to put this on the fold. A lot of extra fabric here. Go to pin this on. So we have one last piece to cut out. It's the collar that gets cut on a fold. And we only need one piece of this. So I'm just working from one layer of fabric down here, which I will fold in half. And I'm actually not going to use the selvage edge of it just because that can sometimes be a bit bulkier when you're folding something back and hemming it. So I'm going to give it a little bit off the selvage since I have the extra fabric to spare. So I've left till the very end cutting out the trickiest part of the pattern, and that is the neckline. Um, you will see on this pattern that there's a lot of marks going on here, and we will address each of them as we come to it. But the important one when cutting this out is the fact that there is the point E and the point C. E is what you cut to. If you cut to C, your collar piece will not match up with your neckline of the, the bed gown. So you can e cut to E or you can cut slightly within it and wait to cut that last little bit until you're actually placing the collar in uh, later in the process. So I'm just going to mark that letter E with a pin right there. All right, and now I'm going to take off the pattern piece. You've marked the point for the width of the neckline. Let's mark right on the fold, the center of the neckline through both pieces. This is where the top of your pattern ended. We can now open up along the fold. And you see that you have the body going lengthwise. All right, so remember, point E on the pattern is marked with a pin. You do not want to cut further than that or your neckline will be too large. Point G on the pattern is right where I have the pin at the end. And since I have this still on the fold here for the center front and the center back, I can cut that neckline right now from point G to point E. And I'm stopping right with to the safe side of point E and that pin mark. I can always cut out a little bit more later if I need to when I'm putting in the neck. Now, I didn't draw anything on here or put any extra marks. I was just following the grain line of the fabric because this linen has a really nice um, weft. 
and warp. That's obviously it's easy to follow the warp since it's a stripe, but you can follow the weft pretty well. So it just depends on the fabric and your comfort. All right, now I can take out these pins and I think I'm going to open it up and and you can see now the fold that's left from being folded so long. If you need to mark that with a pin or if you need to take a piece of chalk and draw that line or if you're using striped fabric, you can just cut from the hem all the way up to the neckline. All right, so now we have the center front cut out and the neckline. We have body of the bed gown cut out, collar, sleeve pieces. Stay tuned for part two of the Historical Sew Along series where we'll begin to assemble your bed gown by putting on the cuffs and stitching the side seams. If you liked this video, please subscribe to our channel where you'll receive notifications of future sew alongs, tips and tricks, and other fun things that we offer. We love hearing from you. So if you have any questions about this video, any suggestions or feedback, please leave them in the comments below. Enjoy cutting out your pattern and bed gown and we'll see you for part two next week.